Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity Podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest Eye Clarity episode. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam, and I want to welcome you to another Eye Clarity podcast. So I'm going to take a question from a follower. He's got a condition called central serous retinopathy, CSR. This is a condition where there's a fluid buildup behind the retina. Now, sometimes it can look like a blister. It also can turn into a retinal detachment. Sometimes the choroid, which is the layer behind the retina, which is also filled with blood vessels, is part of the reason why the fluid builds up in the retina. The first thing to note is the retina has one of the highest metabolic needs in the entire body. And this means that it needs lots of nutrients to stay robust. It also comprises of about 50% of fatty acids. This is the fatty part of the body where, of course, we talk about things like omega-3, the DHA specifically, also EPA. Those are the things that make up omega-3. And we don't produce omega-3. We have to get it from outside sources. But there are other reasons why sometimes we might develop this condition And it could be things like systemic inflammation, endocrine imbalances, exposures to things like glyphosate, which is found in the fertilizer Roundup, which creates a lot of inflammatory disease. Also, if you've been taking corticosteroids, if you've suffered head trauma, and central serous retinopathy tends to trend more in men than women. There's also a glucose level relationship, meaning that if you're pre-diabetic, if you have difficulty processing sugars or you're eating a diet that's either high in processed foods or carbohydrates, you might have a higher risk. I even think secondary things like being exposed to chronic blue light from artificial light like screens, blue light in itself can create more of an inflammatory situation, a more drying out situation. But the bottom line is this is a very serious condition. Sometimes you need to get some laser surgery, especially if there's a retinal detachment. If it's in the early stages, there are some integrative things that you can do. I'm going to go into that in just a moment. It's important to stay connected to your eye doctor to get frequent retinal exams to make sure you're not suffering a retinal detachment. And uh, if you do that, then you can start using some of these integrative methods. So if you're going to embark on my path, which is more integrative, I would start with the red lens therapy, the red exercise lenses. I've talked about this in many other video blogs and written blogs, posts on my social media. This goes back to the Jeffries Lab, which discovered that five minutes of exposure to a morning red light in the 670 nanometer range, and you can do that five to seven days a week, this can actually help improve the mitochondria function which improves the ATP function. It reduces things like oxidative stress, something called the reactive oxygen species, which tends to go up as we age in the retina, as the ATP goes down. This is in everybody. So what the red lens therapy does is it gets rid of the oxidative stress and improves mitochondria function. In addition, I would definitely boost your omega-3s I'm looking at maybe 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day of a really high quality 
omega-3 I sell one, but there are other companies, Metagenics sells a good one. And of course, things like vitamin A is really essential for retina health. Zinc helps in the absorption of vitamin A. And one of the issues that happens with poor vitamin A absorption because it's a fat soluble vitamin is the health of our liver, liver and gallbladder. So let me explain, the liver produces the bile that helps us break down the fat soluble uh, vitamins like vitamin A. And also I would add the lutein and zeaxanthin. Those would be other things that you wanna take. But if you've got a a problem with liver, gallbladder, then you wanna substitute uh, or add bile salts and or maybe pancreatic enzymes to your uh, after meal supplementation. This will help in the vitamin A absorption. Vitamin A is critical for retina health. And a lot of people have difficulty assimilating vitamin A and of course lutein and zeaxanthin. I would add the marine carotenoid astaxanthin. So in terms of milligrams, you're looking at about 16 milligrams a day of lutein, about four to six milligrams a day of zeaxanthin, and about six to 12 milligrams a day of astaxanthin. I would consider adding things like bilberry, taurine, ginkgo. These are all great as building blocks for retina health. I would consider nitric oxide and alpha lipoic acid. Again, I sell something on my website uh, that's called optic nerve formula, but it's not just for the optic nerve. So nitric oxide is one of those ingredients that helps in the vasodilation, the dilation of the, the blood vessels in the retina. You know, studies are showing that nitric oxide can help reduce things like uh, eye pressure. And so I would consider nitric oxide as another supplementation. And then you know, this, is get, this gets very interesting, but you want to make sure you're protecting yourself from the damaging blue light. So you're using blue blockers. And uh, also you want to get maybe about 30 to 60 minutes of natural sunlight every day. Now I know there are, you know, mixed arguments about sunlight and it being bad for you and ultraviolet being bad for you, especially it could cause things like cataracts or retina problems. But the studies show that sunlight is critically important, balances our circadian rhythm, it improves our mood, our concentration and attention. And uh, it's just really important for our retina health. So you can go out in the morning light that's the best time. Uh, that kind of resets your circadian rhythms. And by the way, not all blue light is bad for you. In fact, when you get blue light exposure from the sun, that's actually very positive and it helps in the reset of your circadian rhythm. Where blue light becomes a difficulty is if you're using screen time after 6 p.m. and it can affect your melatonin production. And by the way, I wanna bring in melatonin as well I've done a written blog on melatonin and how it can actually improve your eye health. So adding say five milligrams of melatonin can spotlight the retinal cells in a way that increases your eye health. So I, could, I would say include that as well. And then finally, I think that carbohydrates and sugars are your enemy. So you might even consider moving in the direction of a ketogenic diet. This is where I would consider working with a functional medicine doctor. I find whenever there's some really serious retinopathies, whether it's diabetic retinopathy or hypertensive retinopathy, in this case, central serous retinopathy, I would uh, consult a functional medicine doctor and see about moving more into a direction where you're reducing or eliminating carbohydrates and also you, uh, you're moving more into the keto world of proteins and fats. I also like the intermittent fasting process. Some of the preliminary studies I've seen with intermittent fasting is that they can actually support and improve eye health. It reverses aging in the cells. So again, working with a functional medicine doctor, having that doctor monitor you either with some blood work or some other kind of biochemistry chemis testing 
to see if you're a candidate for intermittent fasting, I think that would be another option if you've got this condition. So I hope that that's helpful to you. I appreciate the question. And that's our show for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care, everybody. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the iClarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.